Welcome back to the ongoing odyssey that is me trying to keep this preposterous CPD spawn alive. I've mustered my paramecium, called in reinforcements from the local fish club, and I think I just might make it through this. The faster these fry grow, the sooner I can move them up to brine shrimp and be done with this nonsense. To put that size on, I need to increase the frequency of feedings, and that gives me a perfect opportunity to try something I've had on my to-do list for a while. And that is, to use a hanging, IV-style bag to drip-feed the paramecium. Don't worry, I didn't smuggle this one out of a hospital. They actually make these for watering plants. And they come with a really nice valve that allows for fine adjustments to the flow rate. This bag tops out at about 350 milliliters, which should be plenty for a day assuming that the culture is dense enough. I've found a turkey baser to be really helpful for filling these up, and a bit less clumsy than trying to pour them through a funnel. With the bag filled, I hung it above my tank and fry tray and opened up the valve. At first I let it run open to see where the flow rate tops out. This is way too fast. It would probably be empty in a couple of hours at most. Next I tried the setting for 50 milliliters an hour. On paper, this should last about 5 hours if I have the bag filled to 250. In my short experience playing with these, I've found the flow rates below 100 to be a little slower than advertised. So this might be a better setting for lasting a whole day. And that's perfect. As you can see, it dispenses very, very slowly. I've tried this on a few days over the last week, and one thing I noticed that has me concerned is that despite the water level in the bag dropping, there never seemed to be many paramecium visible in the drip line. I ran about 20 milliliters into a container to see what kind of density would actually make it through the line, and it really wasn't what I was hoping for. Not what I needed to be. Even single-celled organisms must be smart enough not to willingly swim down a tube of certain death. Actually, I've noticed they tend to concentrate in the top inch or two of water, which probably has something to do with oxygenation, but I like the first explanation better. So what ends up happening is that the bag drains throughout the day, providing little food, and by the end I'm left with a small and highly concentrated volume of culture water at the bottom. At this point the pressure drops so much that the flow stops completely, and I have to dump them out manually for the fry. It's not useless, but it's less consistent and reliable than I need it to be. So what do you do in this situation, when plan A fails? Well, you dig your peristaltic autodoser out of the closet. That's what you do. This is a relic from my brief foray into aquascaping, and I'm about to get my money's worth. If you've never seen these before, they're pretty cool. Peristaltic pumps mimic smooth muscle contraction to move, I'm gonna say fluids and soft stuff through the body. I'll let you and the internet work that out together. They also happen to do an excellent job of delivering finely measured volumes of liquid. So these two are used for delivering intravenous medication when that needs to be electrically actuated. Or fertilizer. For me, they'll be moving doomed paramecium. I took one of my culture containers and drilled a hole in the lid just large enough to insert an intake line for the autodoser. With a pump involved, this no longer relies on the paramecium making terrible decisions. The flow rate is obviously much higher, but the pump can be programmed to run up to 24 times a day and deliver specific volumes of liquid. So, I can schedule this however I need to. Fortunately, the relative strength of the water flow isn't enough to bother the fry. If I was dealing with younger or more sensitive fry, I might submerge the outflow to dampen the impact. Next I had to figure out the right volume of water to move at once. When I feed paramecium to a large group, I usually do that by taking several passes with a 10 milliliter coral feeder. Since I would be scheduling multiple feedings per day, I thought 20 milliliters would be a decent place to start. The density looks passable, but with 200 plus fry, I decided to double this and do 40 milliliters per hour on the hour. I don't know about you, but when I set up an electronic device like this and I realize I have to read instructions, most of the time I'd rather jump out of a window. I have infinite attention span for anything but instructions. Fortunately, the steps to program a dosing schedule are really intuitive for this particular machine. So here's what a 40 milliliter delivery looks like. This ought to keep them from rioting. It takes about 30 seconds total, so I'll cut this short. The one remaining problem I want to take care of is that my cultures are designed to be active at the surface. Pulling 40 mils once an hour is going to drop this water level fast, and refilling it every day is more labor that I don't want to do. So what I did was set up a container of clean replacement water on the second pump head. There's a calibration process you can go through for these pumps to make sure that every head moves the same amount of water per rotation of the motor, so I can reliably pull 40 out and pump 40 back in. The water level should stay static. 
I drilled a second hole in the culture lid to run the refill line. I scheduled the refills to run a minute after the feedings to avoid disturbing the concentration of paramecium near the surface where I have the intake. And after all this totally reasonable, not at all unnecessary effort, the fry will be fed, and I can get back to being a person with a life and do other stuff. But let's be real, it'll probably be more fish stuff. I'll see you next time.